Thursday night, T-Wolves and Warriors, game two of the preseason. And then they're going to finish off with three straight against the Lakers, two down in L.A. And we've got the game for you on October 18th. It is odd. Chase Center on the lower bowl calendar still reminds me of Oracle. Right. We take those pan shots. I'm like, hey, that kind of look like it. But we're in a brand new building. And I, I, I just get a kick out early. The fans are coming and exploring everything. And tonight we'll get a look at Minnesota and the Warriors in our starting lineups, courtesy of Southwest Airlines. You'll see Jeff Teague, Andrew Wiggins, Travion Graham, who was actually involved in the Kevin Durant trade, Robert Covington, and the big cat, Carl Anthony Towns, Steph Curry, D'Angelo Russell, Glenn Robinson gets the start along with Draymond Green go. and Marquise Chris. And so Steve Kerr saying, all right, uh, little big dog three and Marquise Chris, show me a little something. There you go. Glenn Robinson be aggressive. Leave nothing in question. We've talked about his athleticism, former dunk champion 2017. The slasher. Although yeah, with paint. And I think for Marquise Chris and then later Omari Spellman. Yeah. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, 24 and 12 and shot 40% uh. on threes. It, that's one of the 10 best players in the NBA right there. That's a tough cover. The man is at peace with his game. There's nothing he can't do offensively. Let's look out for some double teams, maybe. Okay. Uh, we're watching. We're watching preseason. We're watching training camp. We're watching them go over all these different situations. When the double team happens, the guy that comes in double teams, you got to sprint out to the weak side. Then it's the rotation, right? Yep. So don't let him split the double team. Then you got to rotate out of it, find the shooters. This is the time to work on all of that stuff. Played Saturday against the Lakers, had a couple good practices since. And so they you know, were the measuring stick for the preseason. As Kevin Scott, Tyler Ford, and John Butler will blow the whistles tonight. For Robinson to defensively playing the three is going to be key. Teague out of the corner, opens with a triple to start the scoring here. It's going to be interesting all year watching D'Angelo Russell and Steph Curry. All right, I handle, you handle, you initiate, I play off the ball. Raymond Lobb and Marquise Chris couldn't quite grab it. And out of bounds to Minnesota. And that's what you love about Marquise Chris, though. He's got some bounce, vertical spacing. Draymond loves throwing those lobs. Three misfired. Wiggins missing there. You see the athleticism. Robinson not afraid in transition, but missing. Teague will run it back. Minnesota's had some changes. Travion Graham in year four. He was undrafted. And there's Carl Anthony Towns. You got to respect that three, but I still like him out there rather than exactly. eating me up inside. Exactly. Nice this is almost a total ISO for Steph. Oh. Fadeaway jumper. Steph in the mid post. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with it. <laughs> the 30 ISO. Teague with a nice crossover and all the way to the iron. It's a blow by. Usually Draymond gets over there in time from the weak side, just wasn't able to get there. Angelo Russell missing. Now, the Laker game started 11 0 Lakers. You don't want to keep repeating that with yeah. Minnesota scoring the first five. Get on the board. Chris is just daring Carl Anthony Towns. Now you start to see the skill set a little bit. Shot clock at seven. They repost him at five. And he traveled. And so Marquise Chris didn't get beat up on the block there. Yeah. So Steve Kerr giving Glenn Robinson and Marquise Chris a start here. And looking at wing combinations and different minutes and different combos. That's the whole experimentation of the preseason. Got to figure out what works. A lot of new faces here, a lot of teaching happening right now. D'Angelo throwing it back nicely. So we always hear screen roll, screen roll. Look how D'Angelo Russell worked that with Marquise Chris to get the big man the lay in. And that time he threw it late and he made sure the weak side wasn't in there clogging up that roll of the basket. Gotta love that rapport already happening. That was a beautiful read. Wiggins, former number one pick. And Robinson played it well, forced him into the mist. Curry in transition. Steph another lob. So there's the big dog. Yeah, defense the, turns off offense. Yeah. <laughs> the little <laughs> version. <laughs> the little version. The you have little to figure dog. out. The is, big little dog. What's his he, nickname? Is he Puppy Three? Like what, 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 what do we call him? <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask him which nickname he likes and doesn't like. I know, right? I always gotta clear that with these guys. Yeah. Wiggins, nice move without the ball. That he could do more of that 
So take me through this play. Yeah, the alley oop. That's defense turned to offense. Andrew Wiggins tried to reach him from the back. You can't do that against Steph. Throw the lob. Oh, what just happened here? There was a double team. Glenn Robinson came from the baseline. His man cut in there. Someone has to bump that cutter off the lane right yep. here. When he's coming down. Someone has to get that. There's a communication breakdown. Once someone goes, that weak side has to be ready. This is going to be an offensive foul. Offensive foul. Ryan Saunders flipped Saunders side. Unfortunately, Flip left us much too soon. I knew him in the CBA where Flip Saunders coached the wait for it. They went cross catbirds. Oh. And then moved on to the NBA. And I, I think Ryan has done a really nice job and was rewarded with a contract here as Minnesota travel. The players love him. They talk about his energy. That's one of the main things they talk about. And Minnesota's an interesting team. They got a lot of talent. You, you, probably not going to be a playoff team this year, but they're one of those dangerous teams that can beat you on any given night if you don't come ready to play because of that talent. They left Curry in the corner, and that is a problem. The step rails the three. You wonder what was Jeff Team looking at there? <laughs> See, everything runs through Towns, and he's learning to pass there, but. Len Robinson bothered Wiggins. Draymond on the push. Draymond behind his back and laying it up and in. Len Robinson. Len Robinson can finish with the best of them. So getting the start here in this preseason game. And he's played the D on Wiggins and then finished twice. Teeth can launch that three and drop it right in. Jeff Teague was an all star in Atlanta. And he's just one of those guys where pretty steady Eddie running a team. Well, Russell catch and shoot three, rimming it out. And Robert Covington, who's been bothered by injuries, but remember in Philly, phenomenal defensive three. Yeah. Became a good enough shooter to get a long-term extension. I like him. Chris was late there. You just see the, the quickness and this guy the size of Carl Anthony Towns is unusual. Listen, when they run their offense through Carl Anthony Towns, they're better off. And if you can get him the ball in space, get him the ball on the move, better for Minnesota. But I've always said he's at peace with his game. When he came in as a freshman at Kentucky, he played like a senior. Three point play as Carl Anthony Towns completes that. So Towns in the early going with the three point play. Robinson's had the two buckets. And Mr. Curry likes to hit threes. There's your split action. We love to talk about that. Steph is so good at running, just reading the defense. Whatever the defender does is going to use that against him. Well, the mismatch here, Marquise Chris had to pick up T. And Covington missing the three. And how about Chris just soaring in for that rebound? Got away with it. Angelo Russell waiting for Steph. Draymond set another oh. screen. This is another offensive foul. The first one may be a shove off. This one, Draymond saying he ran me over. Okay, look at Steph running through there. His defender is way behind. So Draymond's going to screen his own man. Smart, but referee's just saying he's moving to the side just yep. a little bit. Because his defender was one to switch out and jump yep. out on step. Now that's a good call. And then for Minnesota, number 20, Josh Okogi. So Josh Okogi checking in. Deke looks for his own offense, averaged 12 points a game last year. Steph got the deflection. Active hands. The push ahead to D'Angelo. D'Lo's got Glenn Robinson, his three on the way, rimming it out. And Okogi high for that rebound. Teague and Carl Anthony Towns, they go to Lehman in the corner, the former Blazer, and he bottoms a three, but it's all the pick and roll off of Carl Anthony Towns. Well, Draymond was in the paint there, just helping on that pick and roll, and they saw him, and he was on Jake Lehman. Kick it to Jake Lehman. He had a great year with Portland last year. Moves so well without the ball. I remember him playing against the Warriors. He getting dunks. As soon as his defender turns his head, then see man ball as he scores again on, on point. Lehman. Covington followed his own shot nicely. Steve Kerr didn't like that. So he was going to use the timeout. Midway through the first, did not take Steph Curry long to adjust to Chase Center. Jeff Teague loses him, and that means that three is in.
the T-Wolves up seven. We like to play a little game in the preseason. Where is Kareth Burke? Let's find her. Well, guys, as you walk around Chase Center at the east entrance, there's a piece of artwork that stands out right away. It's called Seeing Spears. It's by an artist named Olafur Eliasson. And there are five spears. They're about 15 feet tall, and there's mirrors on each of them. So it creates a new reality. It's like adding space and creating angles. Now, what the Warriors are seeing here is this spot is turning into a tourist destination. So as you ponder reality and gaze into these mirrors, you can also take a selfie. Well, the Who played here last night, I can see for miles and miles and miles. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, I like it. I with like the it. beers there. That was well done. I got it. Throwing a bunch of lobs to Marquise Chris, and this time Covington fouling him. The Robert dunker Robert spot Robert is so important because if you're spacing out, you know the Warriors are normally a good three point shooting team, you wow. got to have some threat on the inside. Definitely. And the Warriors have some great decision makers, and D'Angelo Russell and Stephen Curry. And if that weak side isn't in clogging up that paint, they're going to throw that lob every single time. Well, all passionate Warrior fans, the energy is needed in the brand-new Splash Zone fan section. Tickets in the Splash Zone are just $25 a game. Go to warriors.com slash splash. That's always going to be the tongue twister. Slash splash. I think you've done it well. Two games in a row here. No, I did not. It's, it's, it's preseason. It's preseason. <laughs> no, no, not quite there yet. <laughs> Free throws down. So Jake Lehman coming over for the Blazers. T and the big cat were T Wolves a year ago, as was a Kogi and Robert Covington. But Covington was hurt. Lehman, if you're just going to let him live out there, he's going to hurt you. Jeff Teague set his screen. Marquise Chris was the closest one. He's going to try to close out to him, but that Jeff Teague screen worked. Angelo Russell and Curry continue. Angelo from the elbow. You know, it looks like he's always taking a tough shot, but he makes way more than you think. I just love his speed. He plays the game. He never looks rushed, never in a hurry. Chris knocked it away. Steph saw there was no trailer and floated it just over the iron. Kogi, you saw this a lot last year. He'll attack, but Draymond bothered him. And Russell pushes the other way. Nope. Deflected. And we'll get Alfonso McKinney into the game. Kind of telegraphed that pass. Trying to get to Steph. That's defense turning the offense. Steph gets it. Covington right there on him. Let the defender go by. Kind of slowed down just a little bit. And Carl Anthony Towns thought he was going to get to it, but Steph is just too smooth, too crafty with those finishes. Glenn Robinson had the two finishes, played some pretty good defense. So now the wing rotation continues. Alfonso McKinney checking in. Kogi's a good defender, pretty rugged. Angelo got some space and floats in another jumper. You know, he doesn't play a lot of pre, you know, pick up in the, the summer and things like that. So he said he's getting his legs underneath him, just playing his way. It's not into shape as Carl Anthony Towns hits a three. It's just basketball game action that he's getting more comfortable with. Than the oh, 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 oh. Steph! was so mean. <laughs> Coming up with a different dictionary. Yes, I got that down. Oh, yeah. oh. 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 Left it out after the miss. Limited oh. 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 The one hand pickup pass is stolen in this league all the time. Cross court, even worse. <laughs> Bob Napier checking in. He and Travion Graham were actually sent to Minnesota by the Warriors. In the Durant transaction, they were teammates with D'Angelo Russell in Brooklyn a year ago. Raymond gapped him and forced the miss. There's not a lot of forwards that can do that against a quick guard. Versatility at its finest. That's why they love Draymond. Angelo's hit a couple jumpers. Ties is over Layman again. He's feeling it now. Delo! Listen, he's working off that pick and roll. He's getting separation whenever he wants to. We talked about it. he's getting his legs back under him. I'll tell you, he is slithery. Man, that's the way he gets in and out of angles. Got to run it. Tal Draymond with the steal. Draymond in a foot race. Draymond will flip it up and out. He didn't get the contact. He didn't get the bucket. Okay, Trayvon Graham outsmarted there because he kind of slowed up. And Napier missing the corner three, but Steph with the pick pocket. 
Draymond Chase. Russell, how hot am I? And Marquise Chris got to get home. Don't give up on the play. So end to end, kind of fun both ways. And D'Angelo Russell, he's got six in nine minutes on three of six shooting. And he's going to score from just about everywhere on the floor. Warriors basketball on NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Chase. Find out about the all-new Chase customer benefits at the new arena at chasecenter.com backslash chase. Look at Lombard Street, the crookedest street in the world with the Warriors up one. Bob Fitzgerald, Kalena Azubuki in San Francisco at Chase Center with the Warriors. A nice run taking the lead. All right, Kalena, this is this is big time here. Mondays, it's time to stand up to the powerful and fight back. Jimmy Smith and Caitlin McGee in Bluff City Law. Mondays on NBC. Nice. How about that? Love it. Jacob Evans. So Jacob Evans first playing time. As he checks in with McKinney, Eric Haskell, and Draymond and Steph. Hey, Layman, look at the confidence there. Hit a couple threes and took Draymond off the dribble. He's bouncy too, isn't he? Jake, Got up high. Jake Lehman, 47th pick out of Maryland, 25 years old, but four years. Remember, we saw him in Portland a couple times. But don't leave Steph Curry. And Minnesota dodges a bullet. His defender fell down, too. <laughs> I know. So this is Derek Culver, who misfired there, but two years in college, a sixth pick overall. Steph right through the T Wolf defense. Oh, Vonley powerless to stop him. It's the Jake Lehman show, but he misses the three. If, if you're wondering if Jordan Bell is going to play, uh, he is out tonight with an ankle issue. As a former Warrior, Jacob Evans getting his own miss. Jacob Evans dropping it off to Pascal. How about creating there? Oh, nice. Maybe your his defender got turned around, just lost sight of Pascal. It's a good two-man game for sure. Shabazz Napier always has had the quickness this time draws the foul. That's how you saw Jacob create for somebody, right? Goes the other direction. No McKinney screen and then watch Eric Pascal's defender Napier just turns around. Pascal's all the way at the basket before he could do anything about it. Well, Jacob Evans has had a great camp. He had a great summer league. And really, those last 10, 15 games in the G League where he just got consistent run, the mid-range jumper was there. He's got some handles, so he's going to bring the ball up some. He's going to make plays for his teammates. You love seeing him aggressive like we saw last game. As soon as he got in the game, he shot it. Missed it, shot it again. Yep. That's what I want to see. Assertiveness. Doesn't matter if you miss. Doesn't matter if you make mistakes. Don't look at the bench. Just play your game. Draymond checking out. Omari Spellman checking in. Spellman acquired for Damian Jones in the offseason. We saw him hit a three in that Laker game. And Omari saying, oh, good. Carl Anthony Towns isn't in the game. This is right. the perfect time for me to check in at center. Pascal's beefier than Lehman. Steph, he is going to tap him as he bangs that home. All around game, we've seen him hit a three. We've seen him get to the basket. He's got 14 already. And you see the quickness of Napier. I think with Shabazz Napier, you got to dare him to make an outside shot. Because his quickness, he, he's trying to get fouled. Definitely close out a little shorter. Want to say hi to everybody watching on NBA TV. Bob Fitzgerald and Kalen Azubuki at Chase Center. Game two here of the preseason in the Warriors' new home. So Shabazz Napier is just kind of one of those steady guys where you think of six years in the league, played for four years at UConn. Charlotte took him in the first round. And with the 24th pick. And, you know, backup point guard Teague, there's going to be quickness for his own offense. And he gives you some security at the point guard position. And as a coach, Ryan Saunders, that's a luxury. Have a guy that can come in the game, get others involved, get you in the flow of your offense, get you into your offense. Well, you got young guys in Culver and Okogi trying to play. Lehman is still a relatively young player. Steph wanted Spellman on the roll. 
Mike Evans off the bounce. Couldn't quite get the angle. Look at Omari Spellman, but he had it knocked away. Big guys don't bring the ball down. Minnesota's switching everything, so they did the right thing. Just try to rip it through, get by somebody. Culver missed it over Iron. Didn't reset the shot clock. That ball did not hit Iron. Strong kick from Napier. Now Kogi. How about Eric Pascal? We'll go. Met him at the top. Steph on the push ahead and just a little too tall for Spellman. And that's preseason. That's not playing with someone quite yet, but it was still the right idea. And that was a good defensive possession that last one. They went into their drawn kick game to Minnesota and you got guys trying to beat you off the dribble. Move your feet and then the help is there at the basket. Make it tough on them at the basket. Final 22 seconds of the first quarter. <laughs> McKinnon just <laughs> clocked. <laughs> Someone. Noah Vonley. Oh went. my goodness. Just Noah Vonley's a big him. man. <laughs> hey, he's he's there though from the weak side. He's alert and ready. Maybe a little overzealous, but my goodness. Here's the pick and roll. You want that weak side in there to clog up that roll. Bop! <laughs> now I'm gonna help you out. That wasn't the foul they called. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I thought that was what they called. No, well, they they mysteriously <laughs> called it on layman. As he was attacking the basket, he got the benefit there. Well, you said bump the cutter. Right, you, you got to bump him. Gotta he, bump was, him. he was listening. So Jake Lehman, pretty nice first quarter. As he's got 10 to lead Minnesota in only six minutes. Shot clock off. That was seven. He wanted to get it to Steph for Jacob Evans. Down to four. Now Steph's got it at three. Eyes behind Spellman, and a foul on shooting at three. And Curry, an opportunity for three free throws. Steph was working there to get it. He sets a cross screen. Then he gets the screen. Then he gets the pick and roll screen. And finally gets the foul. So he comes up here. See Napier falls over. He's already behind. Steph rips it through kind of over the top. Von Lee's there. Just using the defender's motion against them, basically, like he does. He's so smart. So you hear people say, hey, Curry could be back in the MVP conversation, right? You don't have Kevin Durant. You don't have Klay Thompson. 11 minutes, 15 points, two rebounds, one assist, two steals, six of nine for the field, two threes. Yeah, how about your first quarter that's, workout? That's not a bad night's work, I feel like. <laughs> Let's talk about the first quarter. He bottoms the all three free throws, so 17 first quarter points for Stephen. And that's what MVPs do. So the Warriors, kind of an end to end high scoring game. And Curry owns it all. 17 of the Warriors, 35. And at the end of the first 12 minutes, it's the Warriors up four. Selling on Park. By four, Bob and Kalena hanging out at Chase Center. Opening night, October 24th, the Warriors take on the Clippers. First regular season game in the building. All fans in attendance get an opening night t-shirt courtesy of Chase. Get all your tickets at warriors.com. And well, the Clippers have Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and Lou Williams and Montrezl Harrell. And that's going to be an interesting team to open the season with and see four times during the year. Legit championship contender. Most people say they're the favorite. Can't really blame them. I think the Lakers would have an issue with that. Yeah, they would. I think you'd be getting phone calls from Utah and Denver as well. Yeah. Utah, Mike Conley. That's a monster pick of Bogdanovich. They're going to be really good. Uh, I love the 52% shooting because when Mr. Curry is rolling, and that brings the rest of the team along for the ride. There you go. Now steps out. Can you keep it going? And we were talking about this before the game. Jacob Evans is in the game now. Can you follow up your first game stellar performance with another good game here? And this is something Steve did the last game, and I think you'll see it all year. Steph sits, right? So D'Angelo Russell opens the second quarter to kind of quarterback this second unit. And when you have a 23-year-old All-Star when you're doing that, you know, that's a good sign. And we'll call that a beautiful pass to McKinney. Well, that's what McKinney does, right? He always tracks down those offensive rebounds. Or those passes, <laughs> like we're calling it, quote unquote. <laughs> now, some might say an air ball. Yeah. <laughs> air ball goes to the offense. That's it. That's it. That's in the book of Barnett. Especially if you got McKinney on your team. So Shabazz Napier opens. He's going with the rookie, Jared Culver. 
Old Bonley. Andrew Wiggins getting an opportunity again. Yeah, I think Warriors are in his zone right now. Yep, they're trying it. They force the travel. So these are things that they're going over in practice, training camp. We'll try zone every now and then. Got to play your area. Make sure you're in on a string, moving together. So McKinney, D'Angelo Russell, Jacob Evans with Spellman and Pascal. This could be a second unit in the regular season. So Steve trying to see these five and see how they operate together when Stephen Green oh. from the city. Oh, a little extra pass. Alfonso couldn't quite finish. That was a really pretty play yeah. with everything but the basket. He could have maybe gone up with that one, Spellman. I would have liked to see him kind of reverse layup that one. But yeah, it was great offensive execution. They ran the pick and picker there, then the pick and roll. The weak side wasn't in there, but just it was one pass too many. Culver missing the three there. Oh. Angelo's clever, man. You better have your hands ready. There's Pascal scoring the inside. Nate Beer will launch the three. Evans batted it back out. Travion Grant, that's a nice dish to Bonley. Phil Bonley very quietly had a nice season last year. Yeah, the Knicks. Yep, he was, he was on a minimum deal for him in Portland and then Charlotte. And I don't think early in his career people thought of him as a center, but he, that's, no. that's what he's evolved into in today's game. Yeah, he's a little different. He likes to attack from the three-point line. So he's a guy with quickness, and he likes to use that against other bigs. He's like he's got the advantage of Jacob. We'll draw the foul. What I like about that drive there for Jacob Evans, your defender's retreating. He's not in front of you. You know, maybe you're not going to make the basket as much, but you're getting contact. You get yourself to the line. Take up the space. Jacob Evans. Jacob Evans. We were both talking about. It. He showed us something in summer league. He's got some skills. My prediction for Jacob Evans is he is the Kavon Looney of guards. Right. Okay. You know, you're on a great team, so as a rookie, you don't play much. And you, and you go to the G League and everything as Jordan Poole gets his first action. This is year two. Yeah. People start loving Looney in year four. Right. You know, I mean, people have to be patient with them. And we're talking about the bench as a question. If, if you're Jacob Evans, show Coach Kerr why you belong in the rotation. There you go. Yep. You be aggressive night in and night out. That's going to be important, right? They can't all rely on staff and the end of Russell out there. Everybody's got to be aggressive. Take their shot when it's there. Travion Graham with a nice take inside. The Jordan Poole had rolled an ankle here, but tonight able to come back. Pascal did everything right. And just as a youngster, he'll kind of call for the foul, but don't extend the arm away from your body. Get his defender sealed. But what Steve is saying is when he's in the league four years, you're never going to call this. Exactly. Maybe on Graham off back iron. D'Angelo is exhorting people to run through. Oh, man, the nifty handle and then the finish. Oh my goodness. <laughs> crossover between the legs, crossover. Somewhere Tim Hardaway is smiling. He just yanked his face off. And that was incredible. Three. They played D'Angelo and Poole off the ball here. Pascal on the take, driving inside. Couldn't quite finish. Graham comes out of the pack, pushing. Stop the ball first. Culver hitting three. One thing about it tonight, both teams are more than willing to get up and down and run. That was an exciting game. Back and forth. The way the Warriors like to play. Ball kicked. Can, can we please see that? Through the legs crossover. Crossover to the right. Oh, I think I'm going over that screen. Little mid range jumper. Just yank it. And then he was nice posing at the end. Right? Angelo Russell. He's got eight points in his 12 minutes. And he traveled. <laughs> he faked himself out there. Yeah. With a little shimmy shake. Angelo is an interesting player. When he first got in the league, I said. He plays like he's been in the league 10 years, yeah. and I didn't mean it as a compliment. Last year, I said the exact same thing, and I meant it as a compliment. Well, he's got kind of an old-school game. Well, when he first came in the league, it was this too cool-for-school yeah, type of time. Yeah, yeah. 
Then he kind of got humbled. Now last year, it's more of a confident, just veteran, the game is slowed down for me type of vibe. I'm clutch, I'm gonna make the shot, you can count on me type of vibe. Now it's Reed, the beneficiary of that little flip shot. Russell leaving it on the iron. And Russell never looks rushed. Never looks rushed. I'm always fascinated by guys that look like they never have to sprint. I mean, it looks like they never have to go full speed. He's one of those guys. James Harden is another one. He just kind of yeah. coast, yep. and they're so effective. It makes no sense to me. I, I, when I played, I just was all all out all the time pretty much. They change of pace every now and then, but not like those guys. Nas Reed, the undrafted rookie center out of LSU. In one year, Bayou Bengals. He gets going one-on-one, -on -one and Bonnie Reed again. And so if you're the big there, you either got to help and make sure you can't make that pass or you can't leave the guy underneath the rim. And Steve Kerr is going to discuss just that. 7.46 remaining in the half in Minnesota. Getting some easy buckets inside. And there's Kalena's dinner options. Oh, need it. He said what he wants to see in this game and for the rest of the preseason is a better competitive spirit for the Warriors. He said we can make mistakes. We're a young team. We have to figure each other out. But these mistakes cannot be hustle or effort things. And as far as expectations coming into the season, Draymond said, yeah, there's a different vibe, but no one is lowering expectations. He said that's for losers. He wants to teach. Young teammates will get a longer leash, and he is seeing that progress day by day. Well, he and Steph have taken the leadership reins for sure. Uh, I'd assess the energy and effort is good tonight. I think some guys are in the wrong positions on different rotations, and that's going to happen, but it's not the mistakes that Kareth is talking about where you're you're going 30 miles an hour instead of being on the freeway at 70. As Jordan Poole comes off the screen and misses off back iron. Just get a little better each game. Right? I think overall, on both sides of the floor, they're better than the first preseason game. That's what you want. Yep. Defensively, less mistakes. I think offense is looking much better. Nas Reed there. Look at Poole. Put his hands. In the passing lane. Nice. Active call. Okay, so now that's it's a turnover. But that's D'Angelo and Jordan not having play. You know, hey, yeah. run through. I'm going to find you. Yeah. And Jordan probably will say next time, hey, man, I'm going to space out the three-point line. So, you know, but that, that's on the passer. You can't throw it away. Learning each other's tendencies. That's what the preseason's for, right? Maybe on the break, Poole likes to space out more than he likes to cut. You know? You got D'Angelo Russell. He's learned that. Turn over here. Wiggins. Travel. But what I liked was that Jordan Poole's active hand started that break exactly. with the turnover. So you got a young guy playing defense. And that's the effort Draymond's talking about. We can make mistakes, but we can't ever be lacking in the effort intensity department. We need that night in and night out to play good defense. Looking for Damian Lee off the action. And D'Angelo gets it back with a shot clock at seven. Spellman rolling. Spellman! A little flip in the foul. Tell you what, for a big man, he has quickness. Beautiful action. Again, D'Angelo Russell just coming off the ball screen. Now look at the weak side. Reed had to help and recover. A lot of times it's tough to get back in front of that roller if you're helping on that ball screen. Kind of zoning it up and trying to stay level with the roller. He wasn't able to do it. And Spellman took the contact, finished strong. That's what you'd like to see. Three-point play, and you could just see... Willie Colley Stein on that roll with D'Angelo. Looney will be in the right spot there. Reed playing volleyball off the iron. Spellman guarding that ball screen was really good again. How's Reed going to shoot a corner three again? How's Reed going to shoot a corner three? Now offensive rebounds a problem. So Minnesota crashing the glass of Travion Graham with the finish. And given that many opportunities, they're going to make one. Draymond and Spellman playing together with Damian Lee. Jordan Poole and D'Angelo, and on the rip through, that will just be sideline out veteran. of bounds. And so it's a veteran move. So Covington will check back in. Minnesota substitutions returning number 33, Robert Covington, and checking in number 31, Keita Bates Giap. So Keita Bates Giap also checking in. Spellman. Contact. Didn't get the whistle. Tried the fake handoff. Knocked away. And okay. I'll tell you what, Jordan Poole 
is playing some defense there. Jalen Noel thought he was by him, and Poole stripped him. Shades of Andre Godali. He's got some quick hands. Versatile defender. Cut him off one way, spun back. He's behind, so all you could really do is reach in. You got to be precise there. A lot of times you come across the body, you'll get a foul. That's really impressive. D'Angelo sits with eight points and three assists. Minnesota throws it away as Steph checks in. I'll tell you what, though. We've seen two things for Jordan Poole. Had the strip, had also the steal. For a young guy, he's trying to play defense. You know, a lot of young guys, they, they, they don't know what they're doing. The effort, they're worried about their offense all the time. I like the fact that he's putting in effort defensively. That's a good sign. That's how you get on Coach Kerr's good side. Come in focused on the defensive end. If you make a mistake, he'll let it go if you're playing hard. There you right. go. Oh, Spellman had the return pass to Curry, but couldn't quite connect and kicked out of bounds. The Warriors are cutting without the ball. They just got to execute a little bit on the give and go. Well, there's less hesitation yeah. this game. Yeah. Last game at times, guys got the ball. They didn't know to reverse it. Do I go here? Do I go there? Now it's a little more fluid. Hey, Nas Reed is intriguing. Nas he finishes Reed. there again. So Reed's already got six points. Step hiding oh. behind Spellman. The pick and fade. Open three. And he knocked it down. Two defenders go with Steph. Pretty behind the back to Spellman. Had all kinds of time to shoot that. Minnesota, Noel unable to hit that. Draymond on the push. Draymond on the crossover. Draymond to the rim. Cycle it out to Damian Lee. And he had it stripped. Draymond probably could have gone up with that one. Nice little runner. Nate's Diop. Draymond the early rim run, and he'll get himself to the line. So I love what Draymond did there. Steph threw that pass. Draymond didn't put his hands up, so the ball was right there. So Nas Reed had no idea the ball was even coming. It's kind of like a wide receiver. They're always taught to keep your hands down. Don't show the defender the ball is coming to the last minute where it's too late for him to react. Oh, I love that. Be sure to get the My Teams app by NBC Sports, your source for live streaming on Warrior Games. All the news, features, videos, podcasts, and more. Be sure you download the My Teams app. Spellman getting a break. Some good action for him. I liked him on the defensive end. We're watching him in the first game. He had some nice help and recover type plays where he got the deflection. Guarding that pick and roll. Warriors need their bigs to guard that pick and roll. And Warriors, nobody does it better than Draymond Green being able to zone it up and stay level with the roller to the basket. That's what Amari Spellman was doing, especially that first game and again tonight. Some nice defensive plays. Well, he had the three point play too, and he hit the three. And so that stretch five thing, those are Draymond's first points of the preseason. And he just had to finish off the highlights for the behind the back pass from Steph. That was actually incredible. Missing that three. Chris with the rebound. Chris and Draymond. Damian Lee, Steph, and Jordan Poole. Draymond on the roll. That's that open corner three, and Damian knocks it down. That is the shot the Warriors have to have wings make this year. That's the one. That weak side. Pick and roll action. Nobody better when it comes to decision making. Catching on the roll. Right, Marquise Chris, deep end of the pool. He has cap. Initially, and then Teague missing the three. Draymond another rebound. Oh, between oh, the legs. Come on. And Jordan Poole couldn't quite hit it, but Chris, pretty nifty pass in the return feed. Yet Teague in there didn't realize it. Draymond three. Now the Warriors are starting to feel a little bit. They're having fun now, you see, through the leg passes. That's when you know they're feeling good. I tell you, Zaza Pachulia was down on the floor. We were right. talking to the pregame. Marquise Chris just did a Zaza. Basically. Ball moving around. Warrior unselfishness, and Draymond rails a triple. Three of the six championship banners that hang in the Raptors at Chase Center, and a big day with our Land Rover above and beyond. This was on Monday at the New York Stock Exchange in honor of Chase Center. Rick Welts and Zaza Pachulia 
got to ring the bell at the New York Stock Exchange. This is pretty cool. Uh, that's dope. Yeah, they flew out on Sunday, and there's the president of the Warriors, and Zaza off to the left there. That's kind of a nice moment for the Warriors in Chase Center. I'd say the stock on Rick Welts and Zaza Pachulia is pretty high right <laughs> yes, now. I would say so. But it, there's the double team. There we Carl go. Anthony there we Towns. Go. You were talking about that. Uh, and he escapes it, but lucky. threw it away. Now, if you miss Zaza at all, Marquise Chris reminded you about Zaza Pachulia a moment ago. Here is the ode to Zaza between the legs pass for the big guy. So Zaza is saying, okay, that was nice, young fella, but next level is you throw the between the legs pass and you set the screen as well. Oh, Jordan Poole hitting the three. Every time I watch Jordan Poole, I'm like, he's 20 years old. He's 20 years old. I know, right? <laughs> Pretty tough take. A nice finish by Teague. Oh, that, that pass did not have a chance. A couple turnovers, but the tempo's been good. Okay, and look at him. That's going to oh, be a rewarding con. That's a tough one. <sighs> he moved his feet. He kind of guessed right. Teague's coming down. Look at him slide into his right. He tried to cross him over. Oh, now, that's close. He's still moving a little bit. Players miss shots and officials miss calls. And the young official, Mr. Butler, that, that is a charge. That is not a block. It's preseason for everybody. That's it. Officials included. But you used a good phrase. He guessed, and he guessed the right way on the crossover. Draymond fouling Carl Anthony Towns off the ball. Get an idea, though, what the West is going to feel like. New Orleans, Minnesota, Dallas, San Antonio, the Warriors, Denver, Utah, Clippers, Lakers, like Sacramento. I mean, these games are going to be battles. There's some monsters in the West. Every game is important. And Steph committing the foul. So the Warriors, three whistles on one possession here. It's a quick way to put a team into the bonus. Steve Kerr is teaching and talking. So Steph just tripped there. I think he tripped over Carl Anthony Towns. He was guarding the ball screen. He was fighting over the top, did the right thing. And then he just tripped over Carl Anthony Towns. And because he was falling over, he kind of pushed Napier, and yep. that's where the foul happened. Now, if you trip on a guy, hey, that is a foul on Steph. If his, if the other teammate shoves you into the guy, they'll see that sometimes and call the foul on him. Right. Now, this is interesting if you'd see this in the regular season, that Napier and Teague are playing together. So they're going super small, and that's maybe to deal with Curry and D'Angelo Russell. Exactly. And if Clay was here, they wouldn't be able to do it. There you go. Steph missing the three. Big Cat with the rebound. And just a little play there forces Covington into the turnover. That you know, Russell's another guy that I think defensively is going to be challenged by this Warrior coaching staff. Bull banking it in. So confident, so smooth. Apparently, he's not just a three point shooter. We're just attacking that big off the ball screen, taking up the space. Warrior lead grows to five. I think he rejected the screen, and now Big Cat with the dribble handoff. But Chris was in position. Good rotation, made Napier reload, and he bottomed it anyway. So Jordan Poole was in the right spot, but you don't want to leave your feet defensively. Chris, you know how you, you pad your assist hole? <laughs> Give it to Steph. Three's <laughs> <laughs> being launched from everywhere. HD out missing there. Napier. That, that's the quickness that even the end Wait a minute. That's what I do to guys. That's a mean jab step to his right. Got him by D'Angelo. Napier gets himself to the line. Shabazz Napier, eight points in ten minutes. Only one of four from the field. He's been trying to limit the line a little bit with drive to the basket. Drops in the free throw. 
Tonight's Warriors shop item of the game is a great Warriors short sleeve t-shirt for only $24.99. Item of the game offer available while supplies last. Be sure to check out the Warriors shop and everything Warriors at Warriors.com. The Warriors shop here at Chase Center is extraordinary. It's Next huge. level. Thrive City Esplanade. As Napier hits both free throws. Another turnover. We were talking about the Warriors playing without fouls a lot last year. And that's something that the coaching staff has talked about in practice. Sometimes they'll call it a little tighter just so the Warriors can get used to yep. moving their feet and not playing defense with their hands. 11 first half turnovers, but a lot of them have been good passes and just a little bit of mistiming. Covington. Now, is that off the back of the backboard or the bottom of the backboard? The bottom is in bounds. The back of the backboard's out of bounds. Oh, he's close. That Covington come down there. He loses it. Uh, uh, yeah, that was that, the, that's underneath the State Farm yeah, standard. That was, right. That, that is out of bounds. Out of bounds is under. And Steve Kerr is using a coach's challenge yes. to, to do exactly that. Why not? The green light. Where's the green light? We're supposed to see the green light. We gotta see the green light. There it is. There it is. Yeah, but like that sucker. Let's no, go. There, there we, we go. go. There we go. All right, All right. So the coach's challenge, which we talked about at the top of the broadcast, and and just if you missed it, you were doing something at 7:30. We don't blame you. Here are the rules. Okay, you only one, get one per game. Only get one. You can challenge a personal foul and out of bounds. Goaltending or basket interference. Steve Kerr is challenging out of bounds. Yeah. So you call the timeout, which they did. He put twirl the, the fingers. Twirl the fingers right away. You can't wait. You can't look at the iPad. You can't look at the scoreboard. See replays. And they very clearly see that it is off the basket stanchion, not, so the, just, but not the backboard. Yeah, that's what we were just pointing out. Steve Kerr saw the same thing. And I think it's interesting. We'll see. In the regular season, they'll do it later in the game. We'll see them at the end right. of the fourth quarter is when it's a huge play, a game-deciding type play. This is preseason, though. They're just trying it out, so it's okay to do it in the second quarter. Now, this is the first year of the Coach's Challenge, and already uh, the process needs to go more quickly. Right. Now, preseason, you know, you're, it's a new for everybody. One-year trial, they're saying. One-year trial. But basically off of that replay, it'd be pretty simple to see what the – the call should be, since I told you live it was off the State Farm stanchion, <laughs> and that we've replayed it twice. They should just ask you instead of going uh, to Secaucus. Just, know. just ask Bob. That's, that's a good challenge. So Steve Kerr is going to oh, be one for one. <laughs> Steph is raising his hands at center court. It's, it's, it's a look at, win. Look at, look at Steve Kerr taking a bow. <laughs> Steve Kerr took a bow. Turned around. Coach's <laughs> challenge. He's like, I did that. But in all seriousness, it exists for calls that are that blatantly wrong. Right. You, you I mean, come on. That was well done. Yeah. And so, and you get one a game. If you're right, you still only get one. That's it. You can't keep doing it. Oh. There's an offensive yes. foul now, and Draymond is really unhappy. The, the youngest official, Butler, is having a, a, a rough night. And now Steve's going to get a technical foul. And he's called three offensive fouls. So here's your handoff. And Draymond has every right to stay in that spot. I'm not big on that call. He, he has every right there, and Wiggins ran into him. That could either be a no call. It's a no, or, yeah, I was I mean, going to say, no call it then. Yeah, that's because... You can't call it on Draymond. They're both doing the exact same thing. Team shooting the technical free throw after a technical, technical foul made. Steve Kerr. The, the league has had several crew chiefs move into the officiating front office and also some of our very best retire. Mike Callahan and Jason Phillips are now working in the league, which is great, in the league office, but we miss them as crew chiefs. So it is a younger core of officials. And there's going to be some growing pains for sure, but Monty McCutcheon is doing a good job evaluating everybody. Definitely. Covington, you just see the strength. That's your small forward battling on the boards there. So Minnesota, the free throw in the basket. Final 
final minute here of a really interesting first half. Angelo Russell dropping in the three. He's got a nice rhythm to his game. Takes his time, reads the defense. The big's not close enough on that ball screen. He's firing. Covington missing. Trying to get D'Angelo back there. Draymond Ooh. hesitation, and Carl Anthony Towns met him at the top. Faked the handoff, it worked, but help was there. Teague missing that three. Can Steph win the battle? He does. The shot hey. clock is off here. 10 seconds. <laughs> Maybe you're resting for the back. He's like, wait a minute. You're really going to call that? Steph's going to say thanks. I will go to the free throw line. Now, you know uh, where D'Angelo Russell's going to have to get a little more respect? He hit that three and they gave it to Jordan Poole. <laughs> I told you, they go to the same hair guy. It's harder for everyone. <laughs> D'Angelo had eight, he should have had 11, and they gave Poole his three-point shot. They look the same. You may have to change it up. One guy wears it in a ponytail, the other guy wears it down, so you can just yeah, but you know tell what it, them apart a little easier. If they're having foul trouble, you just switch jerseys. There you go. You know, that's a, There you go. They can use it to their advantage. I always thought like the Lopez twins could do that. <laughs> or Jason right. and Jaron Collins. I think they have before. Game. I feel like I mean, I've that, heard that they've done that before. That would be pretty funny. Yeah. He's in foul or trouble. the Morris twins. <laughs> I don't know why that foul would have been committed. Both teams are over the bonus, you know, over the limit here, and there's 13 seconds left in the half. So. He's tapping his chest like, my bad. That wasn't yeah. the smartest foul. Well, I think Steve, but it's preseason. Well, I think Steve just told us that we, we didn't have a foul to give. Exactly. So Napier has kind of lived at the line a little bit. He has only one made field goal, but already 10 points. And this is the first free throw. Yeah, they were going in transition there. D'Angelo just trying to stop them. Didn't realize that would send him to the free throw line. <laughs> Shabazz Napier had basically 10 free throws in 12 minutes. He's been living there. He's made his home right there where he's standing. So he gets one out of two. Shot clock off, final 13 seconds. Got plenty of time to get some good. We've seen a lot of pick and rolls. Here we go again. Steph, his three is perfect. This jumper is so wet. Where was the big? The big wasn't even close to the ball screen. It's Steph Curry at the buzzer, and Wiggins unable to hit. Well, the Warriors very consistent. 35 in the first quarter, 35 in the second quarter. They rack up the speed limit, 70 in the first half. Shoot it at 51%. And I think for Glenn Robinson, he got the start, got off to a nice beginning. Marquise Chris and Omari Spellman man the middle. So Draymond creates. And Kareth Burke is alongside Marquise Chris. Marquise, it seemed like you guys brought a different spirit into this game. What have you been emphasizing at practice? Um, I mean, we got our ass kicked last game, you know, and we acknowledge that. So we just went into this week worrying about ourselves and worrying about we what we have to fix. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, just not letting that happen again. We're just trying to come out and compete. You had a great start to this game, even a between the legs pass there. When the coaches have some decisions to make about the roster, what are you trying to show? That I belong. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I'm just out here trying to get it. You know, and I mean, at whatever cost. So I'm just out here playing, doing my best, and lead the decision up to them. Thank you. Back you to got, you guys. You got to like Marquise Chris at age 22. <laughs> yeah, we got our derriers kicked the last game. We're trying not to have that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love his honesty. It's preseason, baby. Right? And the Warriors up six at the break at Chase Center, and Steven won the chance. Said, you know, how do he and Ryan Saunders kind of attack this second half? And they're starting the same group again. Steph's back in, Draymond's back in, D'Angelo's back in for Minnesota. You got Carl Anthony Towns out there. Andrew Wiggins is back, so it's the same group. So Chris and Draymond, Glenn Robinson, Steph and D'Angelo. Glenn Robinson, who had a good start to the game, a good start to the third, and we check in with Kareth Burke. Well, the Warriors had 16 assists at halftime. They had 20 total in the last game, so I asked Aaron Collins, what differences are you seeing? And he's like, yeah, it's clear that we've already improved in a week. He sees it in the spacing and the cutting, just the overall grasp of the offense. One thing he wants to see more of, offensive rebounds. Like I said, we're going to have a lot of
of games where we're undersized, so we've got to get into legs. And speaking of assists, Kara, the three by Steph Curry. Carl Anthony Towns with the three of his own in response. All right. and, um, Steph Curry's release is so quick. That was a bad pass. He's thrown a couple of those where he won a lot. Attacking inside, Cravion Graham. So he's got six. It's Graham and Covington, Carl Anthony Towns playing with Jeff Teague and Andrew Wiggins from Minnesota. Glenn Robinson, no hesitation there. It's a good shot coming off that pick and roll. Big's not close enough guarding the screen. Shoot your shot. Teague has Chris on a switch. Wiggins is coming to him. Uh, instead, he'll get to the rim himself. So Steph was there from the weak side, but then he left and Andrew Wiggins is talented. Ripped it through. Got the quickness, athleticism. Andrew Russell. That guy is talented. It's fun watching him shoot the ball tonight. Six of eleven. He's got 13. They gave him the appropriate three at halftime as Covington misses everything. Robinson comes out of the pack with Steph pushing. Chris has got a smaller guy on him. He had Teague on him. Finds the open corner three, and Robinson knocked it down. Marquise Chris, good awareness. Yeah. You wanted him to be maybe be a little more aggressive and assertive, trying to get the ball down there in better position, but once he got it, knew what to do with it. Go to the weak side. Graham denied by Russell, his former teammate. Oh, Steph double teamed immediately. The escape pass. And I'll tell you what, like a football wide receiver, Robinson came to meet the ball. That's why he drew the foul there. That was well done, and Steph points to him. Like, I appreciate that, bro. Because that was going to be a turnover otherwise. Yeah, he saved me. I've had enough turnovers tonight. Football, basketball, come meet the ball. Don't assume it's going to get to you. Steph doubled again. Chris, good hands. Pocket five, D'Angelo from deep off front iron. Original starters won't be getting this third with the Warrior lead at nine. Deep, that is clever. Pivot, pivot game on point for a point guard. That's great defense, you had him, and then he just pivoted his way to the basket. Off the Curry feed, Marquis Chris set that screen. The defender was closing out. He made it tougher. That's what you need from your bigs. Set those screens. Look for opportunities. That wasn't a set play. He just saw the defender closing out. He was in position. Find someone and hit him. Uh, this is the story here. How is Steph and D'Angelo going to work together? But there's a screen right there. Andrew Wiggins is closing out. He has to fight over one more guy. Makes it that much tougher. That's discouraging for the defender. Covington's a good defender. Sized him up anyway. There's nothing more discouraging. Like, look at Steph. Look at him. He's like, there's nothing you can do. I am a problem. When you watch his reaction after this shot, there's a reason his teammates nicknamed him the baby face assassin. Take me through trying to guard D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell knew his defender was anticipating him coming off that Pascal screen. Hard one way, yank his face off, mid-range jumper. You know what yanking your face off is? No. So when you throw a move at someone and you get them to the point where their body is going one direction and their face is going the other direction. <laughs> he okay. yanked his face off. So back in the day it was breaking ankles. Now it's yanking faces. I don't know. I just say that. All right. We just got to update this. Thing. <laughs> Warrior lead at 13. You see the talent of Wiggins. He just shows it every once in a while. You're just amazed. At right. And there's the ball. How do you run a pick and roll just like that? D'Angelo Russell is going, I like playing with this guy. <laughs> Marky Chris is like, I am the diver. Of you the dive cut there. You think D'Angelo is a good pick and roll player? Oh my God. Covington. You play defense and you hit threes and you last a long time in this league. Oh, Step with the backdoor cut. Curry hanging up and in. 
They're going to overplay him. Just fake like he's going to the ball. Go back door. His defender's not in between him and the basket. Now threes. Dropping in for everywhere. So Wiggins in double figures. Order lead at nine after Minnesota hit those threes. And Draymond. Draymond, let me get some of this. Everybody knocking down threes. Robinson knocked it away. So he got that little handoff, and Glenn Robinson the third had to kind of fight under. He spun under it. He spun through that screen and somehow got himself back square in front of his man and stripped that with the presence of mind to still strip that and understand where you are after a little spin action. Not easy to do. Now Anthony Towns missing that corner three. Layman. Just a smart play. Can't get the rebound, tip it to a teammate. Oh, man. Curry cutting without the ball. Angelo found him again. It's just that give and go like he does. As soon as he lets it go, the defenders take a break. It's just human nature. Steph has 34 points in 23 minutes. He uses all that against you. He's pretty good, no? The, the kid can hit threes. 20 years of age, you can see the sixth pick in the draft and why they like him. A lot of people saying he's oh, going to be all the way. Oh, oh no. Goodness. Curry again. Steph can 37. You can't do him like that, Steph. Yes, he can. He tried to take a charge there. Kogi wide open. Oh, man. Robinson snatching that rebound. Steph's in one of those zones. And he's fouled oh, on the pass here. <laughs> he saw his teammate right at the last minute. He almost went up, got the three-point foul there. But Jake Lehman is going, can someone get me off this guy? I'm you know what? throwing hezzies at me. That's really good defense. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it is. There's really nothing you can do. There's, I mean, it's that is an otherworldly ball handler shooter extraordinaire. Lehman, for a big guy, did a heck of a job. Russell three off fire. Rebound out to Chris. Marquis Chris and Lehman spiked it away. Curry reload three and ribbed it out. That was the easy, that might have been one of the easiest ones he had tonight. He missed that one. Big cat. And just the, just Active. deflections. Active hands. You can cover a lot more ground if you get your hands active. Warriors seem like they figured that out already. Alfonso McKinney, Omari Spellman in, Nas Reed in for Carl Anthony Towns. Towns with nine points in 20 minutes, as he says. So that last play, Steph set a back screen, and they had him wide open. Nas Reed is shooting threes. Saw him on the inside, just firing from distance there. D'Angelo will be a little too fancy, and that will cost him with a layman layup. He hammers that with the right hand. Cutting Curry again. He just and this just, time he let Okogi foul him and laid it in. It just stinks guarding Steph. That's all that is. It just stinks. To, the guy does not stop moving. Defenders are going. Look, you've been killing all game. Take him play off or something. Well, I said this for the Laker game, but I'm going to say it again. I'll probably say it the third time we play the Lakers on the 18th. In the NFL preseason or in the MLB spring training, the stars don't play. Okay, you know, and, and that's fine. I understand. Steph Curry has 4D yeah. in 24 minutes in a preseason. <laughs> and he's still working. <laughs> but it's just fun. If you're a fan, yeah. you get to see the real guys. Steve Curry's going, good job, lad. Keep going. Layman, good take. Draymond did get, get the layout. Oh, oh, had the Kogi on the re-steal. Layman on the reload three. Okay. McKinney with the rebound, his fourth. But Draymond closed out, made him pull it back down and, and shoot a tougher shot. After the shot thing, the three is not as easy. Kogi, he reached. Steph setting up McKinney. Now Alfonso and Glenn Robinson have to hit that shot. That's, that's got to go down in this Warrior offense this year. Layman backdoor cut, didn't catch it cleanly, but did draw the foul. So McKinney was overplaying that, and he wasn't in between Layman and the basket. 
So as soon as Lehman saw that, he's saying, I got the lane of the basket. I'm going to take it. Yeah, he goes back door. He's a smart player. So for McKinney, next time, if you want to overplay that, at least get in between your man in the basket so he can't just go by you. Yeah. Jake Lehman dropping in the one free throw. NFL Week 6 almost here. Michael, Sarah, and Tim discuss all the lines as they break it down. Watch Daily Line weekdays at noon on NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve Kerr uses a timeout there with 443 remaining in the third. Mr. Curry has 40 in the preseason game tonight. At practice, he was assertive that he belongs in the NBA, and the Warriors are a team where he could find some stability. He was the eighth overall pick in 2016, but he's played for four teams in the past three years. Now, Chris said he approaches these games as a helper, a screen setter, a passer, a rebounder. The biggest thing Chris can do from his perspective is get the scorers open. For Marquise Chris, he played extensively as a rookie in Phoenix. And then he talked about his own temper and maybe some immaturity and ended up with Houston. Then he got traded again. He's just looking for a home. He's 22 yep. years old. And as Kareth mentioned, the former eighth pick overall. And the Warriors, particularly with all the injuries of the big guys, uh, Marquise Chris is becoming a story in training camp for sure. And that play we were talking about where he set that screen on got closed yep. it out to the end of the rest. He wouldn't have done that when he first got three. So that shows me that he's coming along. He's growing as a player, understanding, yeah, it's not just when I get the ball I need to focus on. It's off the ball, knowing where my teammates are at, setting screens for my shooters. A lot of times, I'll get rewarded if I play that one. That was great. Nice roll. I would think that Steph and D'Angelo are done for the night. So yeah. Jordan Poole and Jacob Evans playing with McKinney, Eric Pascal and Amari Spellman. Jacob, there's the mid range, and he's been hitting that shot. And I like the fact that he looked for it. And he gets good separation. Pulled it back with a crossover. Just a little short, a little flat. Culver with a tough take, and he will get to the line. Now, during the last time out, Kalena Azabuki had a life changing event as he had his first hot dog bills ever. Only at the Olympic Club in Silverado and here at the Chase Center. It is a hamburger shaped like a hot dog. And for golfers around the Bay Area, they know that the hamburger hot dog at Hot Dog Bills is absolutely fantastic. The original burger dog since 1950. And what was it, your maiden voyage? What was the verdict? It was great. I'm telling you. It just, it's different. It's, it's a hamburger and the hot dog bun. And the toppings, it all just worked. It was just a different experience. I've never had that before. When you're here at Chase Center, be sure to check one out. And again, I'm always available to try any of the food in this arena. I'll give you reviews on it, whatever you need. Jacob Evans hitting a three. I'm just shamelessly pulling for Jacob Evans. I love that kid. And I know how hard he works, and it's good to see it as Okogi gets a floater in response. And for him, he's got to think, I got to reward myself by being aggressive. I'm working so hard in practice. They, Jordan Poole is fouled shooting a three. And rookie Culver got him, so Jordan will shoot three. Jared Culver. Jared. Something going on with ankle injuries when you think of Smiley Geach had an ankle, Alec Burks had an ankle, and then Jordan had an ankle. All this training camp, but good to see him able to play tonight. Ice it, game ready it. Rice diet, elevation, probably hit all those. Rest, ice, compression, compression and elevation. elevation. Rice. What the? There you go. He oh. and Kavon Looney, both from Milwaukee. There you go. And Kavon Looney is starting to do individual work again, so that's a good sign with his hamstring. He's a huge part of what the Warriors do. Well, he provides such a steadiness, and now he's, you know, one of the KG veterans on the team. Versatility. He makes two out of three. Layman's at 6'9", look at him handle there, but unable to finish. Culver, he, he's not afraid to launch. Spellman's got a smaller guy on him, they never saw it. Spellman and Pascal, he, he got some beef down below. Waiting for the roller. There it is. He's got Spellman to the line. 
So he threw the shot fake at him and then threw the pass. That's playmaking. That's a smart pick and roll player understanding the weak side isn't in. I can give it to my roller. Well, you talked about what Jacob and Jordan build on that Laker game, and I think so far so good. It wasn't just a flash and then he didn't see him again. The Warriors and Candy Topia have joined forces to create an interactive, immersive basketball experience. You got to check out Hooptopia. You live the life of a warrior, including getting drafted, celebrating a championship with a confetti shower and more. Warriors Hooptopia is now open to the public. It's right here at Chase Center. Check it out at Hooptopia.com. That's where Karen Burke was dunking at Hooptopia during the Laker game. Another incredible fan experience. Nas Reed knocked away by Pascal. Credit Reed for getting on the deck and getting the ball back. Shot clock at seven. Bogey, good movement. Blocked by Spellman. And the Warrior lead at 12, and we're watching a lot of the youngsters have moments. Evans to the rim and sent away by Lehman. He almost was surprised the lane opened up like that. Damian Lee, that's an excuse me foul that bailed out of Kogi and will put him on the line. Josh Kogi, two years at Georgia Tech. He's only 21 years old. He was the 20th pick a year ago. And he was unusual in that he, he played defense right off the bat. Well, his goal for this season, he said, is to be the best two-way player in the league. He's got a long way to go. <laughs> now he's really good defensively, like you're saying. Offensively, that scoring average needs to come up. The three-point shooting percentage needs to come up. You can't go 28% like you did last year for three-point range and be the best two-way player in the league. Way too many incredible two-way players in this league. I like, I like the high goals, though. Well, I like the audacity. Melman. Catch and shoot three, rattle that out, and Napier will push. Kobe's already a good defender. That time he'll get to the line again. He's aggressive, he's athletic. He's got the quickness. Getting to the paint. So when you think two way players, Clay Jimmy, Thompson. Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard. Paul George, Giannis Paul Antetokounmpo, George probably, yeah. Giannis for sure. Yeah, Paul George. I mean, it, it's, I, and that's why, you know, just personally, that's why I love Michael Jordan, okay? Highest scoring average ever. He edged out Wilt by the end of his career. But he had years where he had 200 steals and 100 blocks yeah. in consecutive years as the off guard. He also, the year he averaged 38, he was the defensive player of the year in the same season. Remember when he would get guys like coming like from their blind side, right? catch him off guard and block him from behind. He used to love doing that. Pascal picks it up, and you know you play defense. You know we always talked. I tried. To, we always talked about it with Jim as well. You know, JB is that you got to take pride on both ends of the floor because sometimes you have to impact the game on both ends of the floor. Well, the thing is, for a lot of these young guys, guard the best players you can possibly guard because really there's no downside if you think about it. Because a lot of some of these, some of these really good offensive players, like a James Harden or even a Steph Curry for opponents, they expect you to get to, to yeah to get beaten, right? And them to give you buckets. If you hold them to a little less than their average, they start calling you stopper. You know what I mean, and, and it could just be that they're having an off night, or you make them work, or enough. you make them work a little harder, yep. take tough shots. So why not? There's no downside. That's how I used to look at it. Like, I want to guard Kobe Bryant. I want to guard these guys. If they give me buckets, that's what you expect. Well, that's a nifty pass and a better recovery by McKinney. He blocked that dunk. Spellman ran the floor, and then he threw it backwards. Yeah, Kogi was in good position. And Culver able to put that up and in. So Minnesota making a move after Steve Kerr sat the starters. Had Reed switch out on him. Got pocket seven. He didn't panic. Damian leads. Nice movement without the ball. Make yourself available. Damian drops in the three. And McKinney actually cut there. The defense collapsed on him. And that kind of freed up Damian Lee. 
Boz Napier missing that three. Big Cat saying, give me the ball back. And Carl Anthony Towns missing that. Spellman's a pretty good rebounder. He is. Puts that big body in the right place, got good hands. He's got some skills. Some split action. Dark split. Oh, Damian Lee just dropped that shoulder with an offensive foul. Okay, Kogan, I see you. Defensively, it's... Good defense moving his feet. He's built like a linebacker. He, he definitely can guard. Yeah, he can guard. He takes pride in it. Got to that baseline. Crowd doesn't like it. He sold it a little bit. He did, he did. A little embellishment. So five second difference, game and shot clock, winding down to third. Culver spinning. Spellman was there. Oh man. Good rotation. Final five seconds. Damian Lee. Oh, he got the foul before the shot. Oh man. When you play for the last shot, you want to take that last shot. Right. Kenny was trying to set the screen. Can't be too bad about it. So you need four seconds of defense here. How about Spellman, the previous defensive possession? Really good help. So Boz Napier trying to play beat the clock. You know he's going to shoot a three. And he launches it up and out. So the Warriors with 40 from Steph Curry have the 10 point lead as we head into the fourth. She get exceedingly well. Better than 50% from the field, better than 50% on threes. And Mr. Russell and Mr. Curry have combined for 56 of the Warriors 111 points through three quarters. And Steph was just magical tonight. There's the baby face assassin moving without the ball. He doesn't stop working. If he's in the game, he's going to continue to move. And he's going to continue to annoy you with his movement. 111 points with a whole quarter left. I, they play well offensively. I like that. Steve, I'm going to give Steph about 25 minutes. So he goes for 40 <laughs> in those 25 minutes. That's not bad. Talk about efficiency. Now, I know winning and losing in the preseason doesn't really matter. Right. But you got a 10-point lead. You're at home. you got 12 minutes. And I think from a coaching thing, Steve Kerr's like, don't go lose the lead. Right. Just go win this quarter. Yeah. And Just so that's, finish that's, strong. So that's Pascal and Spellman with Alfonso McKinney, Jacob Evans, and Damian Lee. And so, you know, they look at plus minus and they look at units that play together and all right, just don't go lose the lead. Continue to do what got us here. Let's stay away from mistakes defensively. Keep those active hands like you have all game. They've gotten deflections. They've guarded the pick and roll well. Spellman guarding the pick and roll. So Bates, Diop, and Lehman playing with Noah Bonley. Shabazz Napier. Oh. Foul. Another nice hesitation move. It is, how do you sell that? Is it your so, ball handling or how do you do that? So it's your ball handling, but then once you pull it back and you get separation, you act like you're about to go up and shoot it. But you don't get all the way up because that would be a double dribble. So you kind of just raise your body just a little bit like you're about to go up. The defender you thinks you're about to go up, they lunge at you, then you bring it back down and you go by. Steph is incredible. And, and, you have, and, and you have to honor his shot. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Quick it helps to be a great shooter. Obviously, if Steph even flinches like he's about to shoot, everybody's going crazy and jumping at him and trying to contest. So he uses that to his advantage. And so now I think Brian Saunders has challenged a foul call here. So we, we have the Minnesota coaches challenge, and there is the Green Hornet has been summoned. There's, there's the green light. Two and one game. This was an offensive foul on Minnesota. And so they're going to challenge whether or not it was an offensive foul. So here's the illegal screen. Okay. So there's a little bit of movement from Lehman. He's trying to do what we saw Chris do earlier, just kind of screen the man closing out to the shooter. Wasn't really stationary, or was he stationary and then just started yeah. moving once the defender got ran to into him. him and held him? So yeah, 
Rookie some. So we get to judge this at home. Okay, look Foul at is on Lehman. You see him right there. Yeah, he was kind of holding too, it looked like. McKinney's trying to get out there. I think he held initially. Yeah. And then smartened up and pulled and put his hands up. That's the thing too. If McKinney is is trying to go around you and you're holding him, that's that's a problem. If he's just trying to go through you, then you could probably move. So this is the Minnesota. So that the, the, the foul is on McKinney, I believe, for the hold initially. And so we've had two coaches challenge, and I think they're both getting overturned. There you go. So Steve Kerr won his, and Ryan Saunders is going to win his. Wow. Okay, so they're saying that McKinney just tried to go through him instead of going well, out. He wrapped him first. Yeah. That was the first foul. Okay. His officials like, wait a minute, this coach's challenge is a problem. <laughs> That's the thing, you call something and then it gets overturned. You don't feel good about yourself as an official, but keeps him accountable. Hey, it's a super hard game to officiate. It's tough. It's tough. And then this, the NBA has the best officials hey, in the I, world. I tell people, and I'll get ready for it in Tokyo, watch Olympic basketball, watch international oh, basketball. Man. Oh, the officiating is... Oh, wow. Yeah. Unfortunate. And then the players in the NBA are so smart. And a lot of them will try to outsmart the rest, and it's so yeah. hard. Like, well, how would you officiate James Harden? How do you do it? How do you do it? It's the Maybe step backs. Is it a walk? Sometimes it looks like a walk. Best 450 athletes in the world. 25% of them come from countries outside the United States. Yeah. yeah. Truly the global game. <laughs> Steve blowing kisses. Steve and Ryan Saunders. And Tim, right. This is this is what happens when you win the challenge, yeah. right? So Steve was blowing kisses and he's taking bows, and Ryan Saunders is smiling, cheesing. Look at Spellman kept his feet down. Motley. That's tough. Very patient with the left hand. Those pivot moves. So the defender moves his feet, he's in front of you. If you have any kind of pivot game, you can use it there. No Vonley does. Pascal Green for himself here. How about that? For the Villanova rookie. So we got like an 11-minute 11, 11 game here, right? Warriors have the 10-point lead, but it's Minnesota Reserve versus the Warrior youngsters. Bates yeah, Diop be able to flip that up and in. That was tough for Spellman on the weak side to decide whether to come over. Looked like Jacob Evans kind of had him under control. He was kind of on the side of him. Well, for Jacob, he's playing point guard right now, too, which is also quite the challenge. Damian Lee missed the floater. Layman and knocked away. Damian Lee had the good hands. It's a two on one if they hurry. Damian just lost the handle. Did not work out well. Tough pass. Evans kind of two of his legs a little bit. Two on one. Keep coming till the defender comes to you. Right. Make him commit to you. Vonley. He, he spotted Raymond Ritter wide open. <laughs> Ray, Raymond's not much of a shooter and has no lateral quickness, so he didn't catch that pass. But you got to gap Raymond. He was, gap Raymond. He, he was open though. <laughs> I've never seen someone move quickly to be that afraid of the basketball. Uh, it was it was sad. His ears are burning right now. So I have to spend the next two days with Ray. Notre Dame USC weekend, baby. There you go. That's it. You're going. You're going. I'm taking him. Oh. Damian Lee. Just firing there. Nice pass from Spellman back to McKinney. And Alfonso move without the ball. You've got to be able to move without the ball if you're going to play on the Warriors. And McKinney understands that. It's Diop is long and lanky, but he forgot the ball and began that drive. More active hands, too. The running thing through Spellman, he's a better passer than I think we even realized. And Pascal on the other end. The combination of power and coordination is what, Eric Pascal. But when you watch Pascal, he has a huge wingspan. He does. I mean, that's, he, does. he really has. Good long arms and finishes like that I don't think are that surprising. Oh, oh. the ball! Oh, he 
trying to get up and dump that <laughs> He probably could have just laid that one in. But he slipped the screen, though. So they throw in the post, and we've been talking about this split action. And they've been running it a lot. I, I like Eric Pascal a lot. I, I love the first time we were talking to him, and he's like, I'm going to have a driver's license. <laughs> and there you see him splitting the screen, or slipping the screen, I mean. Now, get into the basket. Would it surprise you that two college teammates moved the ball that well? <laughs> no. Omari so, Spellman so, 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 finding Pascal, a couple of Villanova guys working together. They kind of know each other. I think the Warriors are going to be pleased with both of them. Warriors got some interesting young talent. Now, we saw with Jordan Poole, and I see with Pascal, they're, they're not really afraid. Like they're they, not. When you first jumped into the league, was there some trepidation where you're like, wow, this is the deep end of the pool, I'm in the NBA? I think it helped that there was a lot of injuries when I came in, and they were just like, you got to go and do what you were doing in the G League. Go score, go okay. be aggressive. So that kind of helped me, and, and Baron Davis was saying the same thing. Hey, it's still basketball, right? We're all just better up here, but just do your thing. Well, you playing the same way. The other thing, too, for these guys played at Villanova, you played at Kentucky. Right. It's, oh, you know, it's they're, not they're, too big for them. Yeah, they're, they're big moments because they've been a part of it. Right. They've yeah. been on the big stage. Yep. And then you got good veterans like Draymond Green and Stephen Curry probably just helping them and making the transition a little easier. That's, you, you sounded just like Baron when you said that. It's still basketball. We're all better up here. <laughs> well, that's what he told me. <laughs> I know. It's just, that's very BD right there. Yeah. Now, now, mind you, we're all better up here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about that. We're, we're all way better than what you're used to. <laughs> ah. I was like, thanks, Baron. Baron Davis. He, no, he, yeah, he really took me under his wing. He made it so much fun. The Warrior lead at 14. And Watch Toscano Anderson getting his first run. There is the pick the picker action. He tried to think Shoe Spellman. He draws another foul. This time Bonley fouling him. So Warriors know they have to be on point with their offensive execution this season, especially with Clay out for a while. Defenders are going to be keying on Steph. Can you use that against your opponent? Right, set screens. Oh, oh. Clint Robinson. That was Andrew. Oh, that was. You're right, Andrew Harrison. Yes. 22 instead of 33. I should have known it's just a Kentucky game. That's all. Yeah. Layman out of the corner. Just kind of Anderson getting on the glass. That's something Kara talked about. From Draymond and Jaron Collins. Look, everybody's got a rebound, and Spellman. Draws another foul. Spellman doing his work early. As soon as he saw he had a smaller defender running with him. Foul, like, okay, four. let me seal this guy. Well, you gotta you, can, you gotta reward the big guy with that early course. rim run. When he right, runs right. early, feed him. Get as close to the basket as you can and, and seal your defender behind you. Call for the ball. Be aggressive with it. <laughs> Spellman passes up the three. Harrison misfiring there. I tell you, Lehman, he's going to be interesting this year. He's a smart player. Being, you know, eight points a game last year. He played 19 minutes. He played 70 games with Portland. Just rejected the screen. And. Defenders weren't really in position. He took advantage of it. He's a smart player. Warriors are going to go to L.A., but our final preseason game is right here. Friday, October 18th, Warriors take on LeBron and the Lakers at Chase Center. We'll wrap up the preseason schedule, get you ready for Clippers on opening night the following Thursday. Can't wait. That first week, and we'll, we'll show you the schedule at some point, finishing up the game here, but... You got the Clippers, and you know, then you're going to OKC in New Orleans. There's no easing into it at all. Toscano Anderson unable to finish that. Got him. And the steal. And the knock. He still got some bounce. The 2017 dunk champion showing up.
showing out. Well, the idea that the youngsters would give the lead away, that hasn't happened. And one of the veterans making sure of it, the little puppy. <laughs> That's what you're going with? <laughs> the little puppy. <laughs> Going to take a look at the clutch off the bench brought to you by Upwork. And the Warriors are going to need that this year. They're going to need depth. They need contributions from different players on different nights. And you had a lot of guys kick in tonight. And a wonderful pick and roll play from D'Angelo Russell. Jordan Poole never afraid. Confidence for the young gun and Eric Pascal. He's been showing his strength tonight. Some monster finishes from him. And, and the thing with the young guys is they're not consistent yet. But if you have a night where you're getting 25 from Pascal, Spellman, and Poole, you'll live with that. That's a good sign. For sure. So Marquise Chris getting a few more minutes. And travel on Nas Reed. And it's nice. You started the quarter with 10 point lead, you extend it. And that's what the coaches literally that's will tell these guys. Look. We started with a 10-point lead. I put in all the deeper reserves, and you didn't not only not lose the lead, you added to it. Yeah. Now there's still seven minutes left, so right. Steve's not totally done with that lesson yet. It's like forget about the end result. Let's let's go win this quarter. Let's play good basketball. Like that. Oh, Moving out the ball. Oh, Marquise Chris finding Jordan Poole. And that's nice. Chris didn't give him the initial handoff, turned around, saw his defender way behind him, knew he could pass it to him, lay right at the basket. Look at that rebound. Peace, Chris. Jalen Noel missed that. Chris, Chris is just turning heads. Well, 6'10, 22 years old. Doing work early. I don't know. Get the offensive fouls. He had pinned Culver. I like it, though. Underneath the basket. Smaller defender switches on to him. See if you can get really good position. Maybe try a little too hard to get the good position. But he's got size. You can't teach that. He's got the athleticism. He's not going to make mental mistakes. He's going to be locked in. He understands where to be on both sides of the floor. you got to have him out there. No, he's not Reed. He's got a little Montrez Harrell in him. He does. He's just around the basket a lot. Very active. And that's interesting you say that because one of the things about Nas was a turnover again. Offensive, offensive foul. How many offensive fouls have we had? Well, it's been a little bit of a point of emphasis on the moving screens, yeah. and they're keeping an eye on that tonight. One of the things about Nas Reed, people said they're not sure he's going to bring it every single night. That was an issue in high school and college for him. So the fact that you're saying yeah. he's got a high motor right now, it's well, tonight, probably something he wants to hear. No, tonight he has. Yeah. I don't know about him shooting threes. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh. He's gonna travel. <laughs> He's gonna go up and down. And and you know who's right there? Okogi. Like that. You know, Jordan Poole. Oh, I'm gonna be oh wait, yeah. this guy, this guy plays defense. <laughs> he went up to shoot it and immediately regretted it. Yeah, there's a quickness level at this league that he would have got that off in college now, right? Yes, he would have. So the weak side help initially. Yeah. Jordan Poole's man was cutting and he stopped when he saw the drive happening so he could help. It's good recognition and it'll be a block. Yeah. Chris is getting aggressive. He's rewarded for it. You know what we've also seen tonight? I think that's nice, particularly for young guys, and they're all trying to show off a little bit. There's been unselfishness. The, the ball has moved nicely. Well, listen, unselfishness is in the DNA of the Warriors yes. because of one Stephen Curry. Yeah, if your star plays the right way, huh? uh, you would look pretty silly breaking right. off plays and trying to get yours. Draymond, Clay Thompson, all those guys are selfish. Chris, we're down the Robinson miss. Marquis Chris unable to finish that. Yeah, you don't want the, the selfish teams where they run the give and go, like give me the ball and go away. Exactly. Uh, Diop putting that in. So Minnesota make a little push with 450 left. 450 left in preseason game number two, and it's been a nice performance by the Warriors most of the night. What's up, players? Get it? Jordan 
Poole hit a three on one end, and then Minnesota misfiring, but still retaining possession on the other. 16 point game. Jordan Poole, by the way, another double digit outing, 12 points in 16 minutes. Another solid show. Tell you what. 20 year old kid, late first round pick. Well, he has a nice feel for the game. You don't get the feeling that he's questioning himself out there. Super confident, knows where to go with the ball. Okay. Robinson, he started, he's had a nice showing too. Robinson's got 13 in 18 minutes. Six of 10 shooting. He's come up with a steal, and Chris had it knocked away, but that's still Warrior ball. Now, Marquise Chris and Glenn Robinson got the starts. They were really nice. Then you look at the day that Jacob Evans and Jordan Poole had. Oh, by the way, D'Angelo Russell and Steph were magnificent. Draymond hit a couple threes. I mean, it's been a really good night for the Warriors on a lot of different fronts. Steve Kerr has to love what he's seen on the defensive end. Think about it. We saw them play zone. We saw them double team. A lot of different defensive situations, and, active hand, and deflections. You know, and you don't make too much out of the preseason other than this. They played hard. The things you're pointing out, the activity on defense, a little more cohesion on offense, different guys contributing. There's, there's a lot of guys going to feel good about this one after the game. You have to. This is going to be a happy film session. Those always feel good. Yeah, there you go. Jordan Poole is <laughs> launching Why not? Go down to L.A. and, oh. Nas Reed able to finish that off. Two in L.A. against the Lakers, and then on the 18th to finish it off. But the Lakers uh, were just overseas. They're going to come back and play the Warriors basically a day after they return from the Far East. That's never easy. Usually uh, your legs yeah, feel like jello. Uh, the Warriors have participated in preseason games overseas twice. And it, it takes a little while. It does. It does. Jet lag. Get your body clock back to normal. How about the fewest back-to-backs in Warrior history this year? There you go. I mean, the league had paid lip service for many years on we can't get rid of the four and five nights or the back to backs or all these different. They, they've done such a great job, the NBA, to try to minimize the back to backs because it really, it's not good for the players' health. It's not good for the fans necessarily. You know, you're playing a lot of games in a short period of time, so you can have some unavoidable, but by and large, what a real credit to the league to, to get down to 11 back-to-backs. Oh, yeah, and they want to cut down on players resting. Yes. That's the uh, load management. Yeah, yeah, the load management thing is, is not something that the NBA wants to hear, especially with the stars. Bull banking at home doesn't hesitate ever. I kind of like Culver too. The sixth pick too. for Minnesota. A lot of people say he's going to be a starter in this league. A really good play. Skill. Pull one more time and another three. About Glenn Robinson getting all the way into the paint, collapsing the defense, making the good decision. A little behind the back before the pass. Depending on what happens with his career, part of the lore of Jordan Poole's could be the second workout he had for the Warriors. But they liked him initially. He came back and look at he knocked that away. It's still Minnesota ball. But he came back for the second workout, and the Warriors went, uh, that's the guy we want to yeah. draft. Well, they talked about the fact that they love that he's a natural scorer. He gets separation pretty easily for his jumper. Got a nice feel for the game. A lot of times with those workouts, they'll bring in another player that right, you right. can match up against, and you guys just go at each other's necks. He was probably giving someone buckets. <laughs> You know the, the best preseason or pre-draft workout ever when you think about NBA lore is when Glenn Rice came out of Michigan and Jordan Poole misses the three there. And I I think he he went to one team, and it may have even been the, the Miami Heat. And he was in dress shoes and like, you know, street clothes. Stop. And still like made like 11 threes wait, and wait, walked wait. out. And he was in it. dress shoes and street clothes on the court? Yeah, like, no, he, he just, didn't. I don't know if he, his gear didn't get there or whatever happened. <laughs> But basically, Glenn Rice was like, oh, you want to see if I can shoot? What? Throw me a basketball. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. That's, at least that's the way the legend goes. Okay, now, okay. You know, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. I was, Sometimes yeah, the legend yeah. is a little, you know. 
But basically, basically, Glenn Rice was like, let me adjust my wingtips and then <laughs> and rail a bunch of threes. Wow. You know you got a winner when you can shoot in wingtips. Yeah. And, and he was a phenomenal shooter, obviously. He was. So. He was. But yeah, a lot of the, the draft workouts, there's, there's some good stories about, oh, yeah. about that stuff. Right. Sometimes it's two on two for bringing a couple other guys and just let you play. Warriors have hit 140 here. And there is Culver. I, I, I'm telling you. He's, he definitely shows you something. That was a tough closeout for Descano. He was in there helping on that pick and roll, clogged up the roller, and had to close back out to the shooter. Culver took advantage. Culver's got 17 to 25 minutes to play extensively. Scano Anderson. Oh, nice little flip shot. And he draws the foul. The Oakland native. Man, you're not going to hit a three on me and me not say something about it. <laughs> Come back down the other side and get aggressive myself. Get a three point play the hard way. You know, Okogi fouled him, but I credit him with a minute left in a preseason game still playing D. Hmm. You know, I, I, I like I like his mindset. Every minute is important. Oh, and Culver turning the corner, and Toscano Anderson met him at the rim, but Nas Reed cleans it up. That was an incredible defensive play. Two guys stayed with one, but somehow they recovered, and Toscano blocked that one? That was great. So these deeper reserves took a 10-point lead to begin the fourth, and it pushed it to 20. Kavion Pippen, who is Scotty Pippen's nephew, he missed a shot on the other end. He was signed as the Warriors were down a few pigs in this training camp. And he was just working in Arkansas, waiting for a phone call. Well, he was missing there. And end of garbage time. Pascal will track it down. There's no need to shoot it. The Warriors will end up with a 20 point win, led by Curry and Russell, but a lot of Gonna feel good as Kalen Azabuki said a happy film session. A lot of good energy, good ball movement, some definite shot making. Glenn Robinson the third, who got the start from Steve Kerr, and really had an excellent game. We saw him in the open floor, we saw him hitting shots. So Find out what nickname he prefers with his father being the big dog. Is she gonna ask him? I don't know. But for Glenn Robinson, uh, by his own standards, a bit of a down year last year and looking for a bounce back with the Warriors. And Steve Kerr trusted him at the small forward spot and he answered the bell. So, so for the Warriors, it's now down to LA for two preseason games on the road, and then we'll be with you on the 18th. For the fifth and final preseason game, you're going to see an awful lot of the Lakers over the next <laughs> the next three ball games. And Kareth Burke has Glenn Robinson the third. Well, Glenn, you guys have two preseason games under your belt. What kind of improvement can you already see? Um, we're just trying to execute every day. We're trying to get better. Um, it's a little different for me. You know, I played against the Warriors for five years now. Um, and, and coming here and, and getting to be in this offense, you know, it's a blessing. And um, just learning from Steph, learning from Dre, uh, the guys every day, we're just trying to continue to get better. And speaking of those two, Steph set you up with the lob. Draymond had a no look to get you going. This is a team that emphasizes assists. What's that like when everybody gets involved? It's fun. You know, we all want to play the right way and have fun with it. And um, when you got great uh, pass great guys like that you know it makes the game easy and all I got to do is run so um, a lot of credit to them and uh, they come out and practice and play hard every day you know um, so we just trying to get better and we know your dad's nickname was big dog is there a nickname for you as you start to get yourself established yeah I'm just going with the flow you know some people call me GR3 third um, just going with it you know GR3 I think we got it thank you very much thanks a lot appreciate it okay. GR3 Trey GR3 do you like that if the dad was the big dog, can't you be the little, little puppy? puppy something? I don't know. <laughs> keep, keep a canine related. Right. But the baby face assassin went for 40 in less than three quarters. Warriors went by 20. Glenn and I will be back and wrap it up right after this.